Next, the feature you've been waiting for, and who better to tell you all about the Dixie National Sale of Junior Champions than the woman who's been covering it for Farm Week for more than a decade. In the studio with us, Amy Myers. Amy? Mike, every year the Sale of Junior Champions showcases 4-H and FFA livestock exhibitors whose animals won big in the show ring. This year, the event celebrated its golden anniversary by reaching new milestones and smashing a sales record. Held in conjunction with Jackson, Mississippi's Dixie National Rodeo, the big sale brings many groups together in support of one industry none of us can live without, agriculture. The legend that is Dixie National Sale of Champions. It's sort of like livestock auction meets rodeo pageant meets social hour meets award ceremony. Out of all livestock at Dixie National Roundup the previous week, only champion animals are auctioned for top dollar. First, let these numbers sink in. About 1,600 exhibitors showed over 2,200 head of livestock at Roundup, and roughly 45 of those animals win a champion title. So what's the winning anatomy? Well, these are meat market animals. For starters, they must stack up to meat industry trends regarding ideal skeletal frame, muscle mass, fat content, and other criteria. You know whenever you pick out your animals how big that they're going to be just because you can tell by their structure. You're never sure even if you look at a really, really good one and you buy it, you still don't know even up until the last day. Kylie Roberts has made the sale more times than we can count. She says exhibitors buy show animals when they're young and not fully developed. That's why memorizing that winning formula from head to hoof and spotting it in a young show prospect is crucial. Kylie starts prepping in the summer for show season. Daily priorities begin with providing clean water, food, proper shelter, and tending to all medical needs. One of the trickiest parts is to master the winning strategy of adjusting exercise and feed rations throughout the year. How their structure looks depends on how much feed that they get and how much feed that they will continue to get towards the end of the year. But making sure that they're at the, the rate that they need to be at, even on show day, is still very, very hard. Of course, practicing is imperative. Riley Melanson says making the animal feel safe and comfortable really pays off come showtime. We lead them around our barn and we set them up and so they learn how to set their feet and they know what to do when they get to a show and they know what you're going to do so they trust you. Riley says the smallest details matter, even, believe it or not, practicing with hair. We prep our animals and it's called putting adhesive in their legs, in their hair, in their top line, in their hair to make them look bigger and bolder. If you don't work the hair at home or they're not used to products like that, then they'll get nervous and they'll freak out and they won't act to the best of their ability. Kylie says working hair can get tedious. I try to work hair at least every day and sometimes that requires rinsing their legs or rinsing their whole body and just getting the blower in there and getting all the water out and just keeping the hair really healthy. I will start rinsing before I feed and then I'll make sure that they all have cold water and cut the fans on and feed them. After they eat then I'll let them lay down for a good two to three hours and I'll get them out and I'll rinse them again because it gets really hot in the middle of the day. Then again I'll just make sure that they have cold water. In the summer, it's really late before you get to feed just because of how hot it is, even at 6 o'clock in the afternoon. So I'll get them out again and rinse them for the third time and kick them out that night. That routine may seem over the top, but it makes a difference. In the showmanship category, Riley won first place at Dixie National. Out of 70 exhibitors, showmanship focuses more on how well exhibitors handle their animals. One key component you might not expect is to hold constant eye contact with the judge. So the judge will know that you're looking at him and that you're able to be aware of everything going on in the ring, that you have confidence in your animal that she's going to stand and she's going to stay in her spot while you look at the judge or while you answer his questions. He can sense that they've been working with their calf or they haven't been working with their calf. Both Riley and Kylie say their livestock projects have taught them priceless life skills. Showing livestock has taught me hard work and determination. It's taught me to be the gracious loser too. Or if you're the winner, congratulate the one who didn't do as good as you. I would say that the skills that I've learned are 
just being able to communicate with others so like in a job interview I feel like I'd be pretty comfortable. You have to follow rules if not then all your hard work is just down the drain. Don't do anything that you're not supposed to do because that could end up hurting you really bad in the end. With so many exhibitors striving to succeed, Sale of Champions committee members like longtime volunteer Ted Kendall wish to reward their efforts. It's been very rewarding. I mean, we've come a long ways from the first sale of $7,600 on 22 animals. But I think one of the best things we've done is set aside a portion of this money for scholarships. This year, 37 scholarships were awarded to high school seniors, ranging from $1,500 to $2,000 each. In the five decades since the big sale started, over $6 million have been awarded to sales and scholarships. That speaks volumes for the faith that supporters have in livestock projects and how they benefit youth. And by the end of the day, that total went over $7 million, a golden bonanza over those 50 years. Sale of Champions Committee Chair Noel Daniels says groups are formed to purchase each animal. Each group buys these, these certain animals, from individuals to different companies, which is good for your business. It's the future of Mississippi is our kids with our animals and our agriculture. I told them we're going to beat the best record this year regardless. The 2019 sale did just that with a preliminary total of over $382,000. Naturally, I just had to see what setting up a champion felt like. I actually showed sheep and hogs myself for 11 years. Unfortunately, despite making several championship drives, that big purple ribbon stayed just outside my grasp. As we reflect on how Dixie National has evolved and generated support over the years, there's certainly much to celebrate. You can imagine Sale of Champions founding father, Dr. Dwayne Tucker, would be proud. Great job, huge event, and 50 years of history. Very impressive. Yes, uh, these young people have come a long way. They really are impressive. Yeah. Well, they certainly deserve a lot of praise for what they've achieved. Absolutely. Thanks, thanks so much, Amy.